What's going on, everybody? Drew Peters, the mad scientist of Dragon Pharma. And today, on Dragon Science Mythbusters, we're going to take a look at a common myth for one of the most common ingredients in the entire world. Is caffeine addictive? There's been a lot of evidence on both sides of the coin. It's been heavily debated, but today we're going to take a look at what the science says. First and foremost, caffeine is the naturally occurring stimulant that's also the one of the most commonly used ingredients in the entire world. It's found naturally in things like tea, coffee, cacao plants, and in a lot of dietary supplements, things as fat burners, pre-workouts, or one of the personal favorites out there, energy drinks. It works by stimulating the central nervous system, helping you stay alert and prevent the onset of tiredness. More specifically, on a physiological level, it works by blocking adenosine from acting. Now, adenosine promotes muscle relaxation and sleepiness. It also promotes the release, in the very small amounts, of dopamine, the feel-good hormone. It's absorbed through the small intestine after ingestion within an hour and reaches peak concentration within two hours. The half-life, in other words, how long it lasts in the body, can range anywhere from three up to 10 hours. And this will depend on the individual and how much of an enzyme called CYP1A1 they have in their body. This is the enzyme, as you may have guessed, that metabolizes caffeine. Now that we know exactly what caffeine is and how it acts, we first must describe exactly, by definition, what addiction is. According to the National Institute of Drug Addiction, the NIDA, it's defined in addiction as the uncontrolled or compulsive use of a substance even when it causes negative consequences for the person using it. It's often tied, and this is crucial, to dopamine release. Caffeine does not produce a rise in dopamine to a significant level or in large surges. Now, it also doesn't cause an unbalanced reward circuit in the brain necessary to cause addiction. So right off the bat, by the first definition, caffeine does not meet the criteria for being addictive. Now, when we look at a couple organizations, such as American Psychiatric Association, it does not classify caffeine as addiction, but it does recognize caffeine withdrawal as a clinical condition. On the other hand, the World Health Organization, the WHO, actually classified and recognized caffeine as addiction as a clinical disorder in 2012. So you have a split. The NIDA and the APA classifies caffeine as no when it comes to addiction. However, the WHO classifies it as a yes. So, we're in a bit of a tie break. Let's take a look a little bit deeper and look at some studies. In one study in 1998 by Dali et al, the most widely used psychoactive substance in the world was in fact found to be caffeine. And in Western society, 80% of the adult population consumed caffeine in large enough amounts to affect the brain. It was found that caffeine affects the brain weakly for dopamine release and doesn't pose a threat to the individual or society. And as also, they found that there's no need to diagnose as caffeine dependence as in the psychiatric manuals. That's another strike if you're looking to classify caffeine as addictive. In a more recent study in 2006, Satel et al. did a meta-analysis, in other words, a composition and thorough analysis of multiple studies across a large sample size and found that caffeine does not fit the psychological profile of addiction that states when regular use is irresistible or creates issues. It was also found that the intake does not cause harm to the individual or to society, nor are the users compelled to use it. It was found that cessation after regular use of caffeine can result in headaches or lethargy. However, that's easily reversed by a small ingestion of caffeine to offset this. Overall, it was found a few and far between isolated phenomenons of caffeine showing addictive properties, but the data was too inconsistent to validate the syndrome of true addiction. So that's another strike for no. So we've come to the end of our video, and as you may have guessed it, we consider, is caffeine addictive to be busted? Hope this has been helpful. Hope you learned something today. This has been Drew Peters, the mad scientist of Dragon Pharma with myth busting. Is caffeine addictive? I'm a machine.